Okay, uh, welcome everyone for uh, the uh, this new um, session of the um, Oyoni Community Awards. Uh, today uh, we we are going to uh, we are going to uh, give you a general update uh, on uh, the Oyoni project, but I don't want to spoil uh, too much uh, now. Uh, then uh, the next uh, speaker will be um, uh, Rachel uh, from uh, the Google Summer of Code. Um, if you missed it uh, in the uh, previous uh, uh, community hour in uh, May, uh, we anticipated that uh, uh, we are currently um, participating uh, with uh, uh, two stud students in terms uh, at the Google Summer of Code, and uh, today we are going to present uh, uh, the, the first uh, project uh, that is uh, um, about accessibility improvements uh, for uh, Oyoni. Uh, then we will have uh, uh, John presenting you this uh, uh, new feature for uh, uh, writing uh, the changelog. Uh, and uh, if you are uh, already a, a Oyoni contributor, probably you know what I'm talking about, or you already saw the um, announcement uh, in the mailing list, uh, but Gianna uh, uh, will uh, show you all the technical details uh, of these uh, uh, nice improvements for, uh, for the developers. Uh, then uh, Michele will uh, present uh, the Uni containerization administration tool, and uh, at the end uh, we will have uh, um, um, we will have the uh, presentation about uh, um, upgrading uh, uh, the um, um, a Podmon containerized uh, Unix server, and the presentation will be from uh, from Donna. Okay, so let's get started with uh, the first item for today. I mentioned uh, that uh, uh, I want to give you a status update, and normally this uh, um, initial presentation uh, in our community hours, uh, it's more uh, a technical recap of what is going on. Uh, uh, in uh, Uyuni or uh, uh, what uh, has been released. But uh, today I want to do something different because we have uh, something uh, to celebrate. Actually, on uh, uh, May 25th, uh, 26th, sorry, uh, in uh, 2018, uh, we had uh, the official uh, creation of the Uyuni, Uyuni project. So I think it's uh, uh, important uh, to uh, celebrate uh, this, uh, this milestone, and uh, it's important to celebrate it uh, with, uh, with all of you. So not just uh, the uh, Susan Manager team, but uh, in general also with uh, uh, the full uh, Uni community. So thanks, uh, <laughs> really thanks for uh, uh, all those years of uh, work uh, done together for uh, bringing uh, Uyuni at the great state that uh, it is now. And uh, looking at uh, some, uh, some numbers, uh, some details. So we had uh, on uh, May 26, uh, as I mentioned, uh, um, the, the first announcement of uh, Uyoni. And uh, uh, the announcement has been done at the Open Source Conference. Uh, then uh, on uh, the 20th of August, same year, uh, the source code has been uh, made available. And uh, yeah, this one, it's also something really important. Uh, the source code of Uyuni is available. Uh, you can uh, fork it, you can uh, improve it, and uh, you can uh, help uh, all of us for uh, making uh, Uyuni uh, a, better, a better project. And uh, always in the same year, uh, but on, uh, on October 26, we had uh, the, the first Uyuni release, and uh, uh, Uyuni at that time was called uh, 400, uh, because indeed the, the number was uh, uh, connected uh, to the uh, SUSE Manager uh, uh, version, uh, so the, the downstream uh, numbering of, uh, uh, of Uyuni. And uh, what happened uh, in all those years? Well, uh, we had uh, uh, 34 official releases, uh, plus, on top of this, uh, we had uh, 16 extra uh, security releases and, uh, of course, mentoring, because this is a community project and uh, it's also important to 
take care of uh, our community and bring more uh, uh, contributors uh, to, to the project. So uh, we had uh, uh, Uyuni part of the Oktoberfest in uh, uh, 2020. Uh, then uh, we had uh, projects uh, across uh, four uh, Suze Aquic uh, editions. And uh, uh, this one is uh, the third year that uh, we are uh, participating uh, at the Google Summer of Code. Of course, this one is just a, a short summary of what happened. Uh, we can uh, really uh, build uh, much more uh, all together. So the future is just uh, our and uh, yeah. It's uh, definitely something uh, that uh, we can uh, we can draw together. So I don't want to steal you uh, more time on this. I want to uh, really again say uh, thanks to all of you, thanks to uh, all the uh, developers and uh, contributors uh, and all the people that worked uh, behind the scenes for uh, uh, making uh, Uyuni possible and for uh, being so bold that decide to create uh, a, an independent project with uh, um, its own community. So thanks, uh, thanks again, and uh, yeah, happy anniversary to all of you. Okay, then uh, let's go directly at uh, the uh, next uh, item of the agenda, so the presentation from uh, uh, from Gretchen. Uh, I will just uh, um, switch off my presentation with a, a presentation, so give me just uh, uh, one moment. Okay, can you just confirm that you can see the presentation? Yes. Okay, thanks a lot. So, Rachel, stage is yours. Feel free to tell us uh, about your project. Okay. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I don't know, Marina, can you see me? Uh, actually, I can't, but because I'm screen sharing, uh, so someone else uh, should. Uh... We, we can see you. Yes, we we can. can see you. Mm -hmm. All good. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, hello, everyone. My name is Rachel Detayo. I'm from Nigeria. I'm currently a Google Summer of Code intern, working on improving Uni's accessibility under the guidance of Marina and Jan. So in this presentation, I'll be talking about accessibility and our goals for Uni in regards to accessibility and the improvements we've implemented in Uni. But before diving into the improvements, I'd like to briefly talk about web accessibility and why it's important. Next slide, please. Yeah. Web accessibility involves ensuring that the content and functionalities of a website can be easily navigated, understood and interacted with by individuals with disabilities or impairments, such as people with visual impairments, hearing impairments, and mobility limitation, cognitive challenges. But why is it important? Next slide, please. First, it ensures that people with disabilities are not excluded from using the web. It fosters inclusion, and that helps in creating an inclusive environment for everyone. Next, please. Legal compliance. It helps organizations to comply with legal requirements and avoid potential lawsuits, because in some countries it's mandated by law. Some countries require organizations to make sure that the things they are building gives equal access to everybody. Next, please. Improved user experience. It helps improve the overall user experience. By incorporating accessibility features will improve the overall user experience for everyone because accessibility benefits not only users with disabilities, but also provides a more user-friendly interface for all users. So what do we hope to achieve in uni with regards to web accessibility? Next, please. First, we want to comply with WCAG, that is Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and try to meet at least the AA requirements. WCAG is a set of guidelines developed by the World Wide Web Consortium, and they have three levels of compliance. 
The level A represents the minimum requirements for basic accessibility features, and it's a must have. The double A level builds upon level A. It includes additional guidelines for a more inclusive experience. It's the most desired level. While the triple A level is the highest level, but our goal for now is to try to meet the double A requirements. Next slide, please. We also want to add some specific improvements like adding keyboard shortcuts so that users can interact with uni web UI without a mouse. Because that will help users who rely on keyboards or assistive technologies. We'll also address color contrast issues to improve readability and visual clarity for people with low vision. We'll add um, alternative text to images and icons. We'll ensure that form fields have appropriate labels. And we'll try to maintain a consistent and logical navigation structure throughout the uni web UI to assist people <clears throat> to assist users in understanding um, the interface, particularly for those who use screen readers or keyboard navigation. So by doing all this, the uni web UI will be more sorry. So uni web UI will be more inclusive, it will be user friendly, and it will ensure that everyone has equal access to its features and functionalities. So how can we achieve this? Next slide, please. We use a particular tool, which is the Wave tool. That is yes, we lost her in long. I think yes. At least mm. I can't hear anymore. Yeah, we need that. Yeah, and her screen's frozen, so. See. It's just uh, for making a bit of suspense. <laughs> so you are more cool. It's Are you back, Rachel? Yeah, she's so, moving again. Yes, so yes, uh, we, we lost the last so 15 seconds. Yeah. I'm sorry. My internet got disconnected. The problem. OK, so. Yeah, I was talking about the wave tool. We use the wave tool to identify accessibility issues on the website. So to use this tool, you can simply search for it in your browser's extension store. You can search for it in your browser's extension store and install it from there. Next slide, please. After installing it, the wave icon will appear in your browser's toolbar or extension area. Then you can click on the wave icon to begin to use it to evaluate any web page. Next slide, please. Wave identifies errors in different categories. That is errors, contrasts, alerts, structure, features, and area. Um, next slide, please. So for the errors in contrast, contrast and um, errors category, the accessibility errors identified under these categories should be prioritized and fixed because that will affect the users. For the other categories such as alerts, structure, features and area, those errors would have to be manually reviewed because they may or may not be accessibility issues. So we, what we do is we manually review those So we've already used the wave tool to identify some accessibility issues on the login page of Uyuni. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, we've used it to identify some accessibility issues on the login page. For example, we've identified that um, a contrast error, um, we've identified a contrast error for the view website link text. And to fix that, we checked <clears throat> We checked several shades of the base color used for the text and then compared them against the background color to see which one would pass wave and still be as close to the original color of uni. Next slide, please. So this is where we are currently. We're focusing on the home page. We're trying to improve the accessibility of this page. It's still a work in progress. We hope to move as fast as possible so we can cover as much of the pages as possible. 
and would also document um, some guidelines for future developers on how to add new code to uni that follows WCAG. And I would also try to continue to join the meetings so that I can provide updates on our progress. So that's about it for now. <laughs> Thank you everyone for your time and attention. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks a lot, Rachel, really. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, do you have any questions for, uh, for Rachel? Okay, let me stop sharing because I can't see the chat otherwise. Sorry. I was just uh, wondering if she has some uh, people that are actually going to be also involved in testing the accessibility. Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, the the work that uh, she's doing uh, is done uh, with uh, the usual uh, development way uh, in Uyuni, so everything is uh, made with a PR, and uh, the the team is uh, uh, making uh, uh, reviews of the changes. So uh, at least we have uh, these uh, kind of changes. But uh, I mean, consider please that uh, the the project uh, started uh, uh, right now, so. Um, we can have a, a early. A better, yeah, it's early. Yeah, it, it's a bit early, but uh, yeah, it makes sense then to select uh, some uh, some users uh, also from uh, from the community that uh, wants to give it a try and uh, and see the difference. Uh, John has a raised hand, by the way. Hi, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Rachel. That was, um, I hope it, that will be also inspiring for other similar projects as well. And also, I would like to encourage uh, all the contributors, especially who are working on the front end side of things or designing any page or anything, to check out this um, tool, the WAVE tool that she just showed. And just have a look at it before finalizing your changes. So, because now we are having this big initiative to make everything compliant, but uh, you will all. Okay, I know. That way. So, at least um, we can be, um, we can take care that we don't introduce new things with the new pages and stuff. So, yeah, please check out that tool. Abit? Then Abit, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, just to answer Dawn's question. So we have a couple of engineers here in Zuzi as well who will be helping us with the testing part. Yep, thanks for uh, uh, mentioning that. Yeah, thanks. they actually do uh, provide all of the certification around accessibility. So they already test our product. Uh, now they will be testing again with the improvements that we are making. Any more questions? Okay, then uh, thanks again, uh, Rachel, and uh, of course keep us uh, posted uh, on the on the progress. So uh, the next uh, speaker is uh, John. That, uh, um, as I anticipated, uh, will uh, uh, present you the last uh, changes uh, around uh, uh, change log uh, writing. So, John, stage is yours. Thanks, Marina. I'm just trying to share my screen now. Yes, I think you should be able to see it now. So yeah, yeah. hello everyone. My name is Jan, and yeah, I will. Um, I have a topic that involve um, that's um, interesting mostly for for contributors. So um, sorry to everybody else, but I will try to keep it short. Um, I don't have a presentation, but yeah, I will show you a couple of different things um, about um, what the whole thing is about. So um, as you might have noticed, if you're following the um, announcement mailing list, um, we um, introduced a change in how we write the change logs in, in, in Git repository to make everybody's life simpler. Um, so basically what's changed is now uh, with this change, we are not um, editing the dot changes files directly anymore. This is not allowed. 
Um, instead, whenever you need a, a change log entry for any, any kind of change, um, you would create a new file um, called um, quite similar as before, the package name that changes, and then comes the new um, extra part of, um, behind that, that uh, name of the author, um, your Git handle, whatever, and uh, a short name for the future. So here's an example um, for the SUSE managers package. Um, the added parts are my username and some arbitrary name for my future. So um, most important change also is on the GitHub action that does this um, change log checks. Um, it has been updated to um, not accept the changes into these master change log files anymore, and also che checks for the existence of a change log file that you write for yourself. And um, a couple of other changes are now this workflow, uh, the, this GitHub action runs only uh, for the release branches. Um, so if you are uh, working on a feature branch for a bigger feature maybe and you have a, you open a pr against this feature branch we are not yet checking for the existence of change logs so uh, you might want to add your, add your change log entries as the final step when merging to the main branch and also um this change log um, test used to uh, report some false negatives um when the changes you did actually doesn't have to involve a change log file. Now that has been changed as well. It will only run for directories that require a change log file that are the directories that belongs to a package actually. Um, you will also notice a couple of improvements on the uh, action itself. The output is more um, descriptive and it consists of more atomic steps right now. Um, and yeah, these, these are the basically the important changes from a, a contributor's perspective that should be aware of. And um, let me try to show you a sample run of the new um, new test. Uh, let's find one here. I think this has a failing one. Yes. So if I go here, so yeah, now you can see all the steps here. Um, very strict descriptive so first off it changes uh, it checks if the master change log files have been modified as i said we're not allowed to do this anymore um, if not uh, modified change log file added change log files in your pull request and this doesn't have that either so that's why it's failing and in the output of the failure message you also you can also see a link to the wiki page that um, explains the whole procedure of writing change log files. So this covers everything, not only Git change logs, but also um, the change logs in OBS. But the relevant part in this document is especially here, change log rules for packages in Git. So I, I also updated this um, paragraph to reflect what I just um, explained. Um, well, so far, if, if that sounds like, um, a little bit complicated or if you feel like oh why do we need to do this all these extra steps now um don't worry we also introduced a new um development tool let's say a small script to auto um make it automatic for you to um add your change log file so the, in the next part i'm, I'm going to show you that quickly um okay, let me open up my, my terminal here okay so i'm now in my um space walk uh, or uni uh, working directory and um, you can see the new tool is here um, you can just run it from here or maybe you might want to add this path to, uh, add this directory to your path variable so you can run it from everywhere so basically it's intended to be run um, in any subdirectory of any package inside of this working directory so um, let's let's make a test um, okay let's see uh, say I want to do some changes in the in the Java package um, I can go to Java package. So here's the base of the Java package. As you can see, the uh, master change log here, and there are already a few um, other change log entries already here. So um, I can even go more deeper down here. So let's say I want, I, I just added a, a new file. Um, 
and when it's okay. So let's say this is my change and I want to add a change log for this. So what I do is I just run this make MK change log um, tool. The simplest way to run it is just with a single argument, which is the change log message. Uh, when I write it like that and run it, it now it uh, it stages in Git automatically this new file with uh, my username and the name of the branch I'm on automatically. So these are intended to be default values for the author and the future name. Um, if you want anything other than these values, you can use the um, respective arguments to change that. And the, you can actually um, run this to see how it is. It's 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 it can be used. So there are this feature and username arguments to change these values if if you don't like them. But yeah, like I said, automatically it gets it from the branch name and your um, GitHub email actually. And this. If you run this tool without any arguments, it will open up your um, text editor in your terminal and um, put the carrot in the right position for you to quickly write your feature, uh, your message. And then you can just save it and you will see that um, all the changes are, are already staged in Git. If at some point, at any point, you don't want to keep the file and you want to remove it there's an argument for that as well and then the file is gone um of course you you might want to add more than one changelog file for if you have changes in 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 multiple packages or simply you want it uh, like that you can run it for example once here and you can go to wherever some other package here and then in the end you will see two different changelog files here just one for each package and you can also e even add um, multiple files for the same package um, by specifying a, a different feature name um, like this now there's a third file even here so you can play, play around as much as you want with these and actually um, the tests really check for the existence of this final part. So it doesn't have to obey the author dot feature name uh, convention, but this is the convention we recommend so that that when you see the file, like we just did um, in the Java folder here, um, when you look at it, it's it's obvious, it's quickly obvious that this is from MC and this this is what it's about. Also, here's one from Welder and this is what it's about. So, um, yeah, in the end, why do we do this? Um, if you are already contributing, you are probably aware that it's it's kind of a pain um, to merge the pull requests when they stack on top of each other, only because everybody's trying to change the same file, add, adding their own entries. And whenever you try to rebase a pull request, uh, rebase a branch, you will most likely get some change conflict, um, merge conflicts in these changes files. But with this change, we um, aim to prevent that as much as possible. So now you could, of course, still have merge, merge conflicts, but actually where it matters. Other than that, it should be um, quite painless to merge the PRs right now. And yeah, with that, I think that was all I wanted to show. Um, I'm not sure if I missed anything, but yeah, so far, do you have any questions? If not, I think I can hand it over back to you, Marna. Okay, and yeah, thanks again for this uh, really helpful uh, feature. It's making uh, our life really easier. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, also, yeah, before I forget, um, if I quickly tell about how this is all all compiled and processed during release, um, maybe. It, uh, it makes sense to know um, for for contributors as well. So during release, during the tagging for the release, um, we, we also adapted the tools for the release engineering to recognize all these files, and it compiles every entry in each of these files into the master changes file, 
and then removes all the other entries. So after release, all these extra files will be gone and all the entries from all these files will be included in the master changes file. Yes, thanks for the clarification. Okay, uh, any any question, any uh, doubt on, uh, on this new feature? Seems not. Then uh, if uh, there isn't anything new, uh, I think we can uh, switch to the to the next uh, presentation from uh, Michele. Okay. Hi, hi everyone. Michele is here. Let me share my screen. Hopefully you can see something. Yes, it's there. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, what I'm going to present right now is the the tool that, the tool that, that we are creating uh, for try to manage uh, the uh, the unicode realization. Uh, it's just something that we start to to develop. Uh, so anything that I will show you is written in the stones. Uh, but yeah, what we are looking for is to have um, to have other 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 idea, other idea how to improve it, uh, or if you want to highlight any any pit for any problem that you see yeah feel free to to show us so right now unitools uh, is this package is an, uh, an rpm uh, that provides to to manage and handle uh, a uni server container so it's it, you can consider it uh, just a wrapper for some useful podman command so the, f the first one that i would like to present to you is the uni admin, admin tool it should be stored uh, in the host system uh, and uh, it helps uh, deployment and setup of uni of, of a containerized uni server so we provide tools for for example start a container migrate a container in this in this uh, in this scenario when we talk about migration uh, we means uh, uh, that we have uh, a traditional uh, uni server uh, and we would like to port everything uh, in a in a container another command that we created uh, is the unictl uh, it's always it should be always be installed in the in the host system, uh, and it provides uh, some 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 tools for day-to-day -to -day operation against the the Unit server. So as I said, uh, let's start with the Uni IDM tool. Uh, so the first command that we have uh, is just the start, uh, and uh, it simply download uh, download the, the latest image, uh, set up uh, all the environment uh, variable in the host system, uh, the the one that uh, you probably know if you ever installed the. Uh, a, a uni server from uh, from scratch it creates uh, a container based on the image that was downloaded uh, it also creates the volumes and bind the port uh, and then after he, he run the stuff script uh, he, everything it's it's ready to be to be used here it's uh, a bunch of of our command that uh, the, the start command can take uh, you probably will see all the command that uh, you really need to set up for creating a, a a uni, a, a uni server and uh, yeah not so much to, to, to talk about that uh, and uh, another important command that we created uh, is the migrate uh, as i said the migration means that uh, we would like to put to move an installation from a from a server to a container to container we we need uh, uh, something before running this uh, this migrate tool uh, so we need that the host system uh, is able to rsync the source server without uh, without any password uh, we already have a procedure for uh, for doing that uh, but uh, yeah if you if you remind uh, and, uh, some other procedure yeah feel free to to suggest him it's nothing within the stone as i said uh, so also in this case uh, it allows the image uh, set up all the environment variable uh, it setup so uh, it create the container with uh, all the volumes uh, all the ports uh, all, the, all the environment variables uh, but uh, uh, this, uh, okay, the main difference with the start is uh, that uh, yeah the, we have this migration part that uh, copy all the all the data from a source system or, or from the source system uh, it recreates the certificate uh, and then yeah you have uh, you have the same uh, uni server that we had before but just uh, in another in another host uh, and uh, everything is running inside the container also here you can recognize all the all the um, all the argument uh, required for creating uh, from scratch uh, um, a, a uni server uh, something else okay i can i will focus uh, 
right here, more in the in the in the pitfall in the in the problem that we see, the limitation. So right now, uh, really the. As, as I said, the the UniADM tool uh, and the UniCTL use uh, the um, sorry, just the UniADM tool, tool. Tool it's using the the Podman service. Uh, so, in the future, we would like to get rid of it, uh, so we don't need to pass the Podman socket uh, as an argument. Uh, but uh, it will just run uh, without service, without any service, uh, and uh, in the in the in the best way that you would like to to use Podman. Uh. So another another things that we would like to to improve right now is that the the container right now it mounts uh, a the a folder from the from the host uh, that contains the migration script uh, and yeah also this one we we would like to get rid of it uh, and everything should be already be embedded inside the inside the unit tools. Uh, um, Another thing, so always right now, when you run the migration, uh, you need to set the host name of the container system as the same of the source system. Uh, this, is, this will prevent uh, loss of uh, reconfiguration and, uh, and error. And uh, yeah, it's, it's the easiest thing to do right now. But yeah, so if you want to run the migration, uh, keep in mind that you need also to adapt your DNS server in order to point to the, to the, new, to the new host name instead of the, of the old one. And uh, yeah, one one prerequisite, as I said, for the migration uh, is that we we are able to rsync uh, without password uh, um, to the to the source server. So we found this procedure using the SSH agent. Uh, it means that uh, before running the migration, uh, you need to configure uh, to create an SSH agent. Uh, uh, you need to mount uh, the, the the folder that contain uh, the, this agent, uh, and also you need to set up your user in, in order to be able to rsync correctly to the to the host uh, to the source system. Okay, um, I'll go also very very quickly with the UniCTL. Uh, this is just uh, right now we just have three. Two arguments. So, if you run UniCTL copy, you will be able to copy things from the host server to the container, or from the container to the host server. Uh, exec uh, is also uh, give you the possibility to run everything in the uh, to run command in the in the in the in the container, and then again, yeah, of course, the the help. Then uh, probably, if there is still time, uh, I can show you. Something already set up to system, just to, to show you that I'm not lying in something is going to work. So as you can see here, this is the um, a system that I create from scratch using a uni, uni admin starter. So of course, uh, after you, you start uh, uh, everything, you would see the, the landing page with the create organization. So what I just probably, I can get it bigger. So what I had uh, here was just uh, um, an OpenSUSE 15.4, uh, and uh, as you can see from my history, pretty short, fortunately. fortunately. So I just installed with Zipper the, the unit tools. Uh, okay, Podman, it, it should be a, a required a requirement from unit tools, but okay, it's not by now. By now. So yeah, after I run this this command, uh, uh, everything will will get, will be up and running, uh, so it uh, it uh, uh, it will do it will perform everything from uh, in a non-interactive way. And then, as you can see here, if you just run uh, UniCTL exec uh, uh, the the command that you prefer, you can just check the status of the of your of your system. So all the all the classic command that you know from the from the Bash uh, service setup. Uh, okay, status. Okay, you know. You know better than me that, that you can run all, all the commands right, right here. And uh, the same happens uh, uh, for the migration. So this is uh, a, a uni system that I had, uh, a classic one. So a server, as you can see here, I have also two million attach. Uh, okay, despite the name, are, are actually uh, the system. I already run some uh, some events uh, here, and uh, so what I did in this case uh, is use this other system, and uh, as you can see right here, uh, first of all I create uh, a, a SSH key for this uh, for this host. Uh, I just uh, set up the the SSH config file uh, in this way in order to have uh, the a simple, a simple SSH connection as possible to my to my server. Then uh, after I create the SSH agent and I add my key, 
uh, after I install the Unitools and Podman, uh, if I run uh, this Unimigrate migrate command, uh, it will do all the magic. Uh, so download the, the, the image uh, and rsync all the all the data that were present in the in the previous uh, uh, server. And then, uh, yeah, as I said, he said uh, you can run uh, Unictl, uh, whatever uh, you need to install. Of course, the, you need to start the the container. But yeah, uh, after everything should be up and running. Uh, as you can see here, I will not perform any any command right now because it's uh, I didn't really configure the DNS as I explained to you. But as you can see here, this is my 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 new system. Uh, everything is running in the container, and I see exactly the same things that I saw before in the in the previous server. And uh, of course, I can run all the all the command. Okay, last things that I would like to, to show you. Okay, as I said, uh, everything is still under development, uh, but yeah, if you want like, to, to, to already try to, to, to use it or to, would like to, to contribute, uh, we, have the, um, we have the server container branch that contains all the changes for, for Uni container. We also have this new project, uh, the Uni project Uni tools that contains these, uh, these new tools that is written in, in Go. And then, uh, yeah, if you in my in my OBS project, uh, there is also the, the RPM that you can you can install and uh, you can use. So, yeah, it's basically everything for me. I don't know if there is any question. Michele. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't raise my hand. Don't raise his hand, so I'm going to let him go first. Okay. <laughs> so, is there a, a minimum Uni version that's required? Do they have to match in order for the migration to be successful? No, no, actually, no, there is no, I mean, uh, once uh, the, the uni contain the unary image is ready, it will be compatible with uh, with everything in this tool. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it's just a wrapper for, for Podman uh, and uh, it automatically still runs uh, some other scripts, uh, but uh, no, uh, I, I don't see any, any, any reason why there should be a, a minimum version right now. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Yeah. I would say that the minimal version for this one is the version that we are working uh, right now, because otherwise the image may not have the, the necessary uh, scripts and tricks that we had to make to, to work on Podman. But as soon as this is uh, ready to test, so any versions from now on should be uh, able to use this. Again? Yes. Oh, thank you, Marina. Um, so my question is: uh, Does the Udini CTL command need to be running in the same system, or 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 can you run it from a different system and connect to the API of of uh, of Udini and then execute? Yeah. By now, the Udini CTL should run in the in the host system. So yeah, but now yes, but uh, yeah, one 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 thing that uh, for sure we need to improve uh, also for Uni admin tool is to to be able to do that uh, in a in a remote way. So another system should be able to control an, another one. So, so yeah, hopefully soon. <laughs> if we need to use it, you have to put it in the same system where the container is running. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, these are very nice, by the way. Much appreciated. Any more questions? Okay, Otherwise, Marina, if you let me to, them. if you let me to just add a little bit more context of what Michele was saying. So uh, currently, the the tool um, is connected directly to Podman to, to perform some operations. So it's not operating directly on SUSE Manager side, but on the deployment on SUSE Manager. Uh, Michele has, has explored one possibility um, of allowing this to run uh, from a remote machine, which is basically starting the the Podman engine and connecting to the socket, but that is still uh, in experiment and uh, it's something that we can uh, try to, to look at in the future. 
but for now we need to install the Unidm in the host OS where the, the Uni server is running. Thanks for that. Any more question? Okay, then uh, if uh, we are done with this topic, uh, I think we can uh, uh, directly move at the to the next uh, presentation from uh, uh, Don about uh, upgrading the Portman uh, containerized Unis servers. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I am I am uh, Don Vosberg. I'm product manager for Sus Manager and a very humble Uni community member uh, because I am not a developer, but I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff that these guys have been working on around the containerized version of Uyuni. So in the Uyuni project itself in GitHub, you can see there is a whole containers. Um, <clears throat> there's a server containers branch, and you can see in here there's a bunch of things related to containers. In the past, we've done uh, containerized proxy. So you see a bunch of these uh, proxy container folders where you have the proxy image and system D services. So as we pointed out earlier, we've been doing the bulk of our work on <clears throat> in a containerized uh, setting with Podman on a, and uh, the initial testing has been in a, uh, a single dedicated host for that. And by using Podman, it simplifies uh, our ability to do deployment and testing. Uh, you can see a folder in here, a couple of new folders in here that are not part of the proxy one. You have server helm, which um, we're not gonna show today, but that's really about uh, running the Uni server in a Kubernetes environment. And uh, today we're going to look a little bit closer, <clears throat> excuse me, at how we set it up and run it in Podman. So you can see there's a server image folder, and um, we've created actually uh, a way for you to use this in a similar method that we've done with containers that you can install a single package for the uni server and it will set up a uh, system d services and just like we did with containers it uh, pulls the image in so uh, here's the repository that i am, am using for this demonstration so uh, just like michele showed you i'm starting with uh, a simple OpenSUSE Elite 15.4 uh, system. Uh, in future, obviously, this will be designed to, uh, uh, we'll have some system requirements around Podman, but we just did it simply uh, this way to show testing. So uh, I'll show you my system that I just built this morning, uh, which is kind of fun. So let me get to my other one. Okay. Okay. So this is my uh, container host for for Uyuni, and uh, I set it up uh, with a big uh, root partition of two hundred gig. As you know. Um, Uyuni has some pretty hefty requirements for disk. And when you turn that into a container, you want to make sure that your uh, container has adequate storage also. So what I did was I added some other repos here. Um, uh, list repositories minus U. Actually, I'm just going to cut the minus U and show you my repository. So uh, I added. The really cool repo that Michele just talked to you about, where I, I'm going to uh, 
show you what I've installed from there. So this is that um, the administration tools that make Kelly just showed us. But I've also added this um, systems management Uyuni master server container. So uh, when you get ready to install Uyuni from containers, it needs to point at a certain registry and have all of the storage requirements, storage volume mappings. The start is can be really daunting. So before we did all this, um, back in April, I was running uh, some tests alongside with uh, Ricardo Mateus, who's who's been a tremendous amount of help in getting this going. And I had to, when I ran my container, I had to specify all these volumes and point it at a certain uh, image that I might have built locally, like this one where I built it locally. So it wasn't really even pointing at a registry. Um, and it was kind of um, ugly <laughs> to set up. I mean, you can go back and build your own container images of Uyuni, and that's beyond the scope of what we're covering today. But to make it simpler for everyone, uh, we we instead created these uh, single uh, a single RPM that you can install from that directory. So if I look at what I have installed, uh, se minus si Uyuni here. I have this Uyuni server system D services. And if you've ever installed the containerized proxy, you know that this aligns uh, directly with the kind of uh, deployment that we've been doing for the proxy. And uh, when I when I do this, um, it sets up the system D services to to engage the Uyuni server in Podman. As a dependency, when you run this, it will pull in Podman and everything necessary. So I can start with a plain leap 15.4. And as I said later, if you are if you wanna run it on other systems, uh, um, we'll get to that, right? <laughs> uh, but for now, I did that. Uh, and then all I did was install this Uyuni server system D services. And do, then uh, if I look at my command history, so I added the repos that I needed to do. And all I did was start the, um, all I did was start that service. So uh, if I do system CTL, let's do this and look for system. CTL. Oh, geez. Type to grab. This is a live demo, so mistakes are live too. So you can see it has this Uyuni server service. Uh, and I all I did was start it um, earlier this morning, like uh, an hour ago. So if I if I rerun uh, the status here to see that it is in fact running, so all I had to do was start that, and it went through the process of pulling down from the registry the version of of Uyuni that I have specified in my um, in my sys control file under Etsy Sysconfig. So let's take a look at that control file which again is installed as part of that RPM uh, at the sysconfig. Uni server system D services is the file. So right at the top, you can see it sets the namespace. So it's pulling from registry um, .opensusa.org. So this is the one that we're building for Uyuni master. And you may have uh, if you've built your own version of the containerized Uyuni with older releases or new, you know, a specific snapshot release or one that matters to you, um, you could certainly point to that because this is where it's going to pull it from. 
Uh, and then the tag here, uh, like every container, um, you can set the tag, but we set the tag to be the latest. Um, and you can see in the notes here that all these fields are required if you're going to uh, migrate instances. So if you're bringing it in like Michaela showed us, uh, you wanna make sure the report DB matches the SUSE manager user and password. And obviously these are the things that you would fill in if you were installing Uyuni from uh, in a VM in the normal way with uh, Yast SUSE manager underscore setup. So it sets the cert information, the database uh, information, and then uh, sets the report DB host and the FQDN. So you can actually change your Uyuni FQDN in this file before you ever start it. But as soon as you start it, uh, if you have not uh, run this before, it will download the image. So if I look at Podman uh, images, uh, you can see that it's pulled in from that registry.opensusa.org, my Uyuni master image. And this is, um, these are not tiny uh, container images. So if your internet connection is slow, expect the first run to take a while because it has to download uh, from this registry, the latest tag as we pointed out, and it's two point something gig. And by doing just that, it will bring my server up and running. So all I did was run this. I haven't done anything else. And now we can look at our web browser and see that in fact, it's running the latest release, which in that repository right now is still Uyuni 2023.04. Now we had intended to show you how easy it would be to go from here to the next version. But as of this morning, that is where the master is pointing. So I can't upgrade it yet. Sorry about that. We'll show that another time, but at least you get the idea. So um, we added obviously uh, Michaela Bosoloto's repository. I added the uh, this uh, container repo here so i have these two installed so we're going to actually use michaela's um really cool tool that he was showing you earlier on the host that we just built so um so if i look at uh what i have installed again for a zipper se minus si of uyuni so um, this is again just a, a very simple OpenSUSE Leap container host, but I have uh, Uyuni tools installed that Michaela showed us. So I can do Uyuni CTL uh, exec spacewalk service data and see that the spacewalk service on my uh, host in my container is all running. See Apache's running, all the good bits are running and it's all containerized. So um, if I look at Podman information, oops, I gotta type it right. Uh, you can see it's pulled the registry and started it up. So um, this the the design for being able to do an upgrade is to simply uh, stop it and uh, update this from the registry to get the latest version and then start the service again um, in order to uh, migrate it in place because the volume mounts, and I'm almost done here, happen, oops, volume LF. So these are the current volumes that we're mapping from 
uh, the uni server. And if you don't make any changes, it goes to the default location for Podman. So any migration has got to be consistent with this set of volume mounts because these are the persistent mapping of elements of the uni server. These all get stored by default in a var lib containers storage volumes. And you can see all of these uh, align with what the volumes were. And I really didn't do anything. This is all part of that automated process of you setting up the Uyuni server. So if you do it consistently with those tools, the next migration should be successful at pulling back in with this persistent storage mapping, the next version of Uyuni, which I'm going to let Marina tell you when it's coming. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the presentation. Yeah, we are uh, a bit uh, behind the schedule. The plan was to have the release uh, in uh, in June, uh, but uh, it's uh, still not ready. So I think the the magic number would be 2023 <laughs> and uh, instead of having uh, the O um, sorry uh, O seven instead of having uh, the O six. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll arrive soon. <laughs> So there's a question from from there's a question from Hugh about is containerized Uyuni the future, or will it be both the standalized standalone install and the containerized version? Uh, the future is going to be running it in containers. We we haven't marked on the Uyuni version scale when that will officially transpire. It answers a lot of questions without causing a lot of issue. Um, and as you can see, we've got migration tools um, that are that are in process. Um, but the idea is that if you know, in a similar way to how you're running Uyuni now, a single host can be set up to be the container host, and with simple service mappings, we can start it um, that way. I know that's the case for SUSE Manager, that when SUSE Manager 5 is released, it will be uh, containerized. Yeah, yeah, and that was Simon's question, yeah. Yeah, so the answer that we were giving at SUSECon is that SUSE Manager 5 will be containerized. Are there any more questions? Sorry, but I, I can't see the chat now, so I can't uh, uh, check there. Um, I have uh, one small question for uh, Boom. So I saw your message um, about you are disappointing with this uh, uh, decision of trying to make uni running on containers and this the supported version. So the idea is to run in good partner. So if you could reach to us our your uh, uh, feelings about this and what you see there as a problem or it's not fine with you, that would be really great for us. Um, to, to also get some feedback from from the community and uh, what they are feeling about uh, the steps that we are making, and just also to, to ensure that uh, we are working hard on making all the tools available and everything to be a, <laughs> as painless as <laughs> possible uh, for for everybody and uh, without any disruption on the existing deployment on, on, and how you use Uni so far. So that is our main goal: not to disrupt anything and not cause any disruption to any environments. I'm assuming that this is, is my mic on. Uh, yes, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, okay. we can hear you. <laughs> on other platforms, I'm used to being able to hear myself uh, through my headset. Teams is not one of my uh, favored things. Um, for us, I think it's mostly that uh, we don't use containers a lot, and the it feels like there's a performance hit by adding yet another abstraction layer 
on top of a single system, um, more complexity uh, versus just running the, the thing in place um, that it doesn't really feel like it's a benefit. We don't have a, a massive container Kubernetes setup. Um, so it's, you know, either you're running it, uh, you know, I, I recognize that it's Podman locally. Um, you know, we do have some experience with that with some specialized apps that just don't play nice with the underlying OS. But this is a dedicated server for running you Yenny because it needs it. Um, and so it's not just a generic workstation that has, you know, multiple build environments going on. I understand why it's appealing to developers, but for a, a sysadmin that's doing, uh, providing a service to a campus, um, adding yet another layer of abstraction because it made developer processes easier doesn't feel like a big win for us. Um, and so the, the, everybody excited about containers because doing build releases is hard and you know setting all of that up i understand that but it, it for us it's the uh, it feels like everybody wants to jump on containers and we haven't seen uh, the value um, sort of thing so that that's kind of where we're at as far as feedback um, we'll obviously adapt if you know the community is Kung Ho on containers and we're the only holdouts and you know what choice do we have but th that's where we're at thank you well um a couple things uh first thanks a lot i appreciate the comment i certainly understand that and identify um because and, and that's one of the reasons that we sought out uh running it in podman locally so that you, we don't require everybody to learn kubectl and have a giant kubernetes build out um, performance wise i've not been able to detect any degradation in performance uh simply by launching it through podman um but again you know my my test systems are not as giant as uh, some of your production environments may be, but um, the goal is for for us to um, be able to scale it so that it is is uh, easily uh, as performant as before. Uh, a secondary um, advantage to being able to run it on Podman in containers is the ability to um, to change the underlying platform so that if OpenSUSE Leap is not your platform of choice, if you have a minimally supported Podman version, uh, you can run it on other operating systems with Podman. Uh, and this is something that for uh, that the broader who uni community has been asking for for some time is to to broaden our available uh, running hosts and by putting it into a container which um, as Ricardo and Cedric and others can tell you is built primarily on the BCI from SLE so the base container image of what's being built is is uh, under our control, but where you run it as a system administrator, because if you have Podman, you can run it, um, will be simplified. So appreciate the POV, and we'll certainly keep that in, in mind. And we're trying to make it as uh, straightforward as possible um, and as performant as possible. But thank you again. And just to echo what Don was saying, uh, so we are trying to focus a lot of time um, on making the user's life as easy as possible. And this that is exactly what Michele was showing, uh, some tools that can basically hide the complexity of management, the managing the container with Podman locally. So we can hide a lot of the complexity uh, behind this. Um, and also one, one more part that is not still read, ready to show is how we can handle uh, CVs and uh, releasing images and so on to make sure that everything is uh, basically up to date if needed. 
uh, that are the, are two main priorities right now, as you can see from these two presentations, the, the image, the container image is working. Uh, but we are not making that official until we can have an easy migration path and easy management uh, platform for this, and we are sure that we can release um, CVEs and updates and whatever is needed for, for Unix. So, and you should not expect in the, in the few couple of months some replacement of package installation by the uh, containerized installation. So this is a process that we are working on, um, and the future is there, but it's not Right, uh, uh, right in the next few months, so we still have a long road to, to cross on this one. Okay, so sorry, we are a bit uh, over time. Uh, so if uh, you don't have uh, any any more question, I think we can uh, wrap up the community hours and uh, of course stay tuned for uh, for the next edition uh, next month. Thanks everybody for your Thank feedback everyone. and presentations. Really good. Yes, and uh, again, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for joining. Uh, and uh, yeah, see you. See you around. <laughs> bye bye. Happy hacking. Ciao.